All right, guys. This is a series of problems called the bulb switcher problems. This is going to be bulb switcher one, two, three, and four. Right here, we're at bulb switcher one, and they're really interesting problems, man. Especially this one. It's more like a riddle than a problem, and it's been very commonly asked in a lot of places. Without any further ado, let's get into the easiest one of them all: bulb switcher one, or just bulb switcher, or bulb game, whatever you want to call it, whatever floats your boat. There are n bulbs in a room, numbered one to n. They're all off initially. Whenever a bulb changes state, that is, whenever it goes from on to off or off to on, it is said to be flipped. John first flips every single bulb, that is, bulbs one, two, three, four, five until n. He then flips the state of every second bulb, that is, bulbs two, four, six. He then flips the state of every third bulb, bulbs three, six, nine, so on, and he continues to do so until he reaches the last bulb. Once he is done, how many bulbs are still on? Now we can see our input is just n, and this is our output, the number of bulbs that are on. There's a nice explanation here, but I've designed an animation to show you how it works. Let's look at that. So here there are four bulbs. They're all off initially, so you can't see anything. John will first turn on every single light bulb. So light bulbs one, two, three, and four all turn on. Next. Every even numbered light bulb, that is, every second light bulb, are flipped. So light bulbs two and four turn off. As we see right here. Next, every third light bulb gets flipped. Light bulbs three, six, nine, and so on. Since there's no six, light bulb three turns off. And finally, every fourth light bulb gets flipped. So light bulb number four turns on. Now we've reached light bulb end, so our process stops. And we simply display the number of bulbs that are on at this point of time. As we can see, two bulbs are on, so our output will be two. Now I'll leave the screen open, guys. You can do your thing. Head on to the coding link below. But there's not much coding involved in this. It's mainly a logic riddle. It's mainly a math riddle and a logic riddle. So once you figure out the answer, once you figure out the concept behind it, you can solve it in a single line of code. You simply have to return a single value. It's one. It's a one-line answer. Try to figure that out. And I'll be back shortly with a clue. Now, when we look at a light bulb, when is it going to be on and when is it going to be off? If we flip a light bulb one time, it goes from off to on. If we flip it twice, it goes back off. If we flip it thrice, it goes on. If we flip it four times, it's off again. So what does this tell us? If we flip the bulb an even number of times, it turns off. And if we flip it an odd number of times, it turns on. Now let's also look at the factors of a number. Let's say we're looking at the eighth light bulb. What are the factors of eight? The factors are one, two, four, and eight. Why are we looking at the factors? That's because, so in the first step where every single light bulb is turned on, the eighth bulb will be flipped. In the second step, light bulbs two, four, six, and eight are flipped. So the eighth bulb will turn off. In the fourth step, light bulbs four and eight are flipped. So the eighth bulb will turn on. And finally, in the eighth step, the eighth bulb will turn off. Now, regardless of the number of bulbs, whether the number of bulbs is eight or even 100, once we hit any step greater than eighth, once we hit the ninth, the 10th, or the 11th step, those future steps are not going to affect the eighth light bulb. So since eight has four factors, it tells us that eight will be flipped four times, which means it will be off finally. Now, what we'll notice about factors is that they typically come in pairs. Why is that? If we look at the factors of eight, we can see one into eight is eight. Two into four is eight. So two pairs of numbers when multiplied by each other form the number itself. Those two numbers are factors. And this is true in most of the cases. Let's have a look at 12, for instance. Here we can see its factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Again, we have three pairs of numbers. 1 into 12 forms 12, 2 into 6 forms 12, 3 into 4 forms 12. We've already established that the number of factors is equal to the number of flips. When will we ever have an odd number of factors? Once we figure that out, we'll have answered our question. Let's look at this number. Let's look at 4. We can see the factors of 4 listed before us. 1, 2, and 4. How is it possible that 4 has only 3 factors? It has an odd number of factors. Well, that's because 
we know 1 into 4 is 4, but 2 into 2 is 4. In other words, 2 forms a pair with itself. 2 gets multiplied by itself in order to form the parent number. When will a factor into itself form the number it is a factor of? That is naturally when we're talking about the square root of a number. A root of a number times itself forms the parent number. If we have a look at 9, its factors are 1, 3, and 9. 1 and 9 form a pair and 3 forms a pair with itself. Again, here we can see there is an odd number of factors. That's because one of the numbers forms a pair with itself. In the first iteration, 9 will get turned on. In the third iteration, where the light bulbs 3, 6, and 9 are getting flipped, the ninth bulb will turn off. And in the ninth iteration, it will turn on again, which is why light bulb number 9 will be on in the end. That is why the answer to this question right here will simply be the root of n. So if n is 5 light bulbs, what are the perfect squares that are less than 5? 1 is a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. So root 5 is 2 point something. We ignore the decimal part. So it's 2. If n is say 10, then the light bulbs that are on in the end after each and every pass will be the light bulbs numbered 1, 4 and 9. That is 3. We know root 10 is 3 point odd. Again, we ignore the decimal part. So it will be 3. And the code is as simple as you see right here. It's probably the shortest thing we've ever seen on this channel. We take the input n and all we do is print its square root and we convert it to integer so as to drop off the decimal part. Once we hit compile and test, we passed our samples and once we hit submit, every one of the eight cases has been passed. Guys, that's the solution to this problem. And the future problems will be slightly more challenging, slightly harder than this, especially bulk game two. I think bulk game two is the hardest of them all. So stick around, make sure to solve all four of these. They're really curious problems. Hit the three buttons on your screen and tell me if you like this new video format where you know I'm not showing my camera and you're able to focus all your attention on the screen. It's been Vivek guys, and I'll see you all next time.